All right, welcome back. Now there's just one step left before we can actually dive into Photoshop and start our retouching, which is that I want to talk about some things that you need to know before you actually start this course. That is from the next video onwards, you actually dive into Photoshop and start doing the retouching, which is that I have tried my best in this course to keep it to accommodate different skill levels, right? So some people might already be good in Photoshop, some people might be starting right from scratch. So I've tried my best to explain the workflow when we go inside Photoshop in such a way that everyone learns at you know, their own pace. So I've tried my best. Having said that, I would say that it'll definitely help you if you know just some of the important things in Photoshop beforehand. And one of the most important things that you should know in Photoshop before you start with this course is the concept of layer masking, because that is something that we'll be using a lot throughout this course. Now, if you've done my Photoshop for beginners course, you already know what layer masking is. So in case you are good with layer masking, even if you have a basic idea of what layer masking is, you can probably skip that part of this video in which I'll be just talking about layer masking and straight away start, move ahead and start this course. But if you're not good with layer masking, what I would definitely suggest is that do watch this video where I start to explain what layer masking is, how it works, so that when we ultimately go into the retouching part, that won't be of any issue to you, right? So that's one thing, that if you don't know layer masking, keep watching this video. If you know layer masking, then you can skip the part in this video where I'll be explaining layer masking. The second thing I wanna talk about is that a lot of times in this course, I'm gonna be using this particular device, uh, which is called as the Wacom tablet, right? This is an alternative to using a mouse. Now, I know a lot of people may not have the Wacom tablet. At one point when I started retouching, even I did not use the Wacom tablet. The Wacom tablet definitely makes it easier for you to retouch photos. There's no doubt about that. But like I said, I know a lot of people will only be using the mouse, at least initially. So what I've done in this course is that wherever there is a part where the Wacom tablet actually is better than the mouse, I have tried my best to explain to you why is that the case by actually showing you how the Wacom tablet differs from the mouse in in those areas. So it's not gonna be a big deal because I'm also gonna be telling you how to use the mouse in such a way that it really does not affect your workflow, right? So again, I'm just gonna repeat this. Wacom tablet is definitely superior to the mouse, but if you're a beginner right now, you don't have to buy a Wacom tablet. If you follow along the course, uh, if you follow my instructions, I have told and I've specifically mentioned there what to do in case you have a mouse and what are the little differences that you might have to make in one or two areas uh, if you're using a mouse. But it's not, you know, the end of the world if you're using a mouse, you can definitely use it. But at the end of the day, once you're done with this course, once you practice and you start retouching your own photos, I would definitely suggest that invest in a Wacom tablet and you'll understand that when you actually do the course. But right now, if you have a mouse, you're good to go. So these are the two points that I just wanted to quickly cover. Now what we're gonna do is, if I'm just gonna talk, we're gonna go inside Photoshop, I'm just gonna show you how layer masking actually works. Like I said, if you already know that, just skip this and go on to the next video, right? If you don't know layer masking, keep watching. From the next video onwards, it's all gonna be action because we're gonna start to retouch our first photo by going inside and color correcting our photo because that's gonna be the first step. So I'll see you there, bye for now. All right, so let's try to understand how layer masking works. So we've got this uh, portrait image here and what we're gonna do here is that we're just gonna duplicate this layer right now I'm just going to right click on this particular layer and I'm just going to click on duplicate layer. Or you can also press Ctrl plus J or Command plus J. All these shortcuts will be shown to you later on in this course. Uh, so basically we have two layers. One is the original which is this background and one is this copy. And then what we're going to do here is uh, we're just going to go to filter, camera raw filter. And you don't have to follow this right now. I'm just showing, doing something to, sh uh, you know, just show you how layer masking works. Don't worry about what I'm doing with the camera raw filter. All these things later on will be explained in this course. Our focus right now is on understanding how layer masking works. So let's say that on this duplicate layer, we are working on this, I just increase the clarity. 
So I increase this clarity and what that does is basically that increases the contrast in the mid-tones uh, which just basically means it's kind of sharpening the shot. Okay, so you can see it just pops out more when I increase the clarity. Now you can see that it's not looking good overall but what, why? the reason why I'm sharpening this is because I just want to get uh, more out of the hair. She's got lovely hair here and I'm just trying to get uh, a bit of sharpening going on there, a bit of clarity going on there. So I'm just, I like this much, but I don't like it for the rest of the image. So that's no problem. I'm going to click on OK and it's simply going to apply it to this background copy layer. So now on the top, we have this layer where we have applied the clarity function or the clarity slider. And you can see that this has had the impact everywhere, but we only want it on these, uh, you know, on this right side of the hair here and some of it, you know, right here, maybe even on all of the hair, that's okay, because most of it is out of focus in this shot. Uh, but let's say, so how can we do this selectively? That's where layer masking comes into play. So what I can do in this case is, I don't want the clarity slider to affect the whole image because, frankly speaking, the image looks much better. The skin looks much better in the original. But because we've raised the clarity, it looks good on the hair, but it doesn't look good on the skin. So what I'm gonna do is, this is where layer masking comes in. I'm just gonna click on this with this upper layer selected, in the one in which we, uh, did the clarity thing. I'm just gonna click on this icon, okay? Something like a square with a circle which says add layer mask. So if I do this, you can see something like a white rectangle comes into play, okay? Now how the layer mask works is that when this layer mask is white, so right now what is the color? White, right? This means that through this layer mask, the below layer is not being seen. So white means that you've put something opaque between these two layers. That means, you know, if I start painting black on this, that's where those are the parts where we'll start to see through the layer below. It's best to actually just explain layer masking by actually start, you know, actually paint with a brush. So I'm going to select a brush here, okay? I'm going to select the black color. So right now, our layer mask is selected, which is right now, which is white. And we have selected the brush with the black color, the paint brush, okay? Now see what happens when I start painting this with black, okay? First of all, if the layer mask was not selected, if I select the thumbnail here with the image, if I start painting black, uh, oops, let me just undo this. So let me select black. If I select the thumbnail, if I paint black, it's just going to paint black like this. Okay, we don't want that, obviously. But if you select the layer mask and if you paint black, just observe what happens. I'm going to do it. I'm going to slightly zoom in so that you can see this. I'm going to first of all do this on the skin, okay? I'm going to increase the flow. We'll be talking about later. We have a detailed video on what flow and opacity are, so don't worry about this right now. I'm just painting black with the layer mask selected, so just see. When I start doing this, what are you actually seeing? What is happening? Okay, so let me just paint this much right now just to explain to you. Now what has happened is if you notice the layer mask, it's showing this black thing here. That means wherever I painted, that is black. So think of this black color on the layer mask as a hole. Okay, like an actual hole. And through this hole, what happens when you're seeing something through a hole? You see something that is below. Right? So you're seeing this original layer below this, which had the correct skin. So you start to, whenever you start to paint black, you start to see the layer below and you start to see the original layer here in this case. If I were to paint white, it would bring back the original effect. Okay, can you see? Now we're getting that clarity effect, effect back and you can see most of the layer mask here is white. So what we have to do here is, there are two options in order for us to achieve what we want. What do we want to achieve? We only want to keep the effect of the clarity slider only on the hair. So the tough way, we can do it with a white layer mask also. The tough way will be that, you know, we paint the skin with black. So we paint the face, the eyes, the lips, and this, the body of uh, this woman with black hair on the layer mask selected. And that will start to show through the layer below because we are creating that hole with the black and then the effect will only be on the hair. But an easier and a smarter thing in this case will be that we can right click on this layer, that is the layer mask, okay? If I right click on this, or if I can, let's say if I double click on this rather, 
Okay, if I double click on this, you get this properties window of the layer mask. And if I click on this button called invert, just see what happens. Click on invert. And now it has just inverted the whole thing. That means now it is mostly black and wherever we had painted, you can see a bit of whites, which were earlier blacks. Now, what does this mean? This means right now that most of the image that you're seeing right now is actually the original image. Why? Because most of it is the black hole through which you're seeing. And only the parts where it's painted white are the parts where which were actually affected by the color slider. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to select this layer mask and fill it completely with black so that we start all over again. Because right now we inverted it and some of the blacks got converted into whites, right? So let me completely fill this with black, okay? So I'm going to go to edit. I'm going to go to fill with this layer mask selected, of course. Go to fill and just click on from the contents menu, just click on black. So this completely fills the layer mask with black. Now, this whole image that you're seeing is coming from where? It's coming from this layer because this is completely like a hole. It's painted black. So this layer, the, what, whatever we did with the clarity slider is actually, we're not seeing any effect of it right now because this is completely black, right? But now is the time we can select our white paintbrush, white color. And if I select the layer mask and if I start painting on this hair, just see what happens. Can you see? And notice the layer mask. Can you see that white has come right here? And I can do the same thing here. I can do the same thing here. And here. And this is a much smarter way of going about things that inverting the layer mask first and then only painting white wherever you wanted the effect in this case of the clarity slider. And if I show you the before and after, if I hide this top layer, this was the original layer. Then we put this top layer with the clarity slider effect for the hair. But because we have a layer mask and we only have the whites painted on these areas, so from this layer, we're only seeing the white portions, which were the hair, the four parts of the hair, one, two, three, and four. You can see the four whites wherever I painted. But wherever it is black, you're actually seeing the original, and that's exactly what we wanted. So this is a slight, a much smarter option because then we have to paint less because we first converted the whole layer mask into black because we didn't want the majority of the image, we still wanted to come from the bottom layer. Only a little bit, we wanted to come from this top layer, right? So this is how layer mask works. Now, let's see another example of this. I'm just gonna completely delete this layer. So I'm just gonna highlight this and press, you can press delete also. So we're starting off from the original, okay? Now this time, let's kind of zoom in to this image. And of course, in this course, I'll be showing you how to retouch eyes, whatever I'm gonna do right now, it's just gonna be very loud. So this is not how you retouch eyes, whatever I'm gonna show you right now. We have separate videos later on in this course, but I'm just showing you this to un make you understand how layer masking works. So with this layer selected, let me open an adjustment function. So I can click on this and you must be aware of the hue saturation tool, right? So if I click on the hue saturation tool, it allows us to change the colors, okay? So I can like, for example, let's say I can change the hue of this entire image like this. So right now this is the original, but if I move it here, let's say we do something crazy. Let's say we do something like this. Okay, we may turn it into blue. Okay, of course we don't wanna do that. We, what we, have, what we want out of this particular exercise is, we just wanna keep this blue color in the eyes. We don't want this, whatever we did with the hue, saturation function, we don't want it to affect the whole image. Right now you can see if I zoom out, it's affecting the whole image, right? So if I zoom in back to the eyes, how can I make this effect only on the eyes? Now one good part is that whenever you open an, an adjustment function like the hue saturation uh, function that we open right now, it automatically opens with a layer mask you can see here, which is already painted white. What does that mean? That's so we don't have to click on this layer mask. Whenever you open these adjustment functions here, they usually open with the layer mask, okay? And right now, of course, by default, the layer mask is white because whatever we do with the hue saturation function, if I double click on this function here, whatever we do with this, Photoshop obviously wants us to do it to the entire image. It does not know that we only wanna do it for the eyes. So it gives us a layer mask and Photoshop is telling us, okay, if you wanna keep this only on certain areas, then you can always use the layer mask. Right now, by default, it's white. So this layer is in effect. But what we want is, we want the bottom layer to show up everywhere except for the eyes. So what are we gonna do? How can we make the bottom layer show up? 
Well, we have to turn this into a hole, a black hole, right? So I'm going to completely fill this with black. The harder way would be that I select the black brush and keep painting it with the layer mask everywhere. But a smarter way, we have this edit fill function here, which can be accessed from the edit menu. And with the layer mask selected, I can go to fill or I can click on black or of course, like I've shown you before, you can also double click on this and click on invert. Okay. Later on in this course, I'll also be showing you even easier shortcuts to directly get a black mask without having to do these additional steps. But that's slightly more advanced. We'll tackle that later on in this course. But basically, right now, you can see that we have this layer mask, which is black. So what are you seeing now? You're seeing through the hole, the image below. That's exactly what we want. But right now, from this layer, we only want the effect on the eyes. So quiz time for you. What are we going to do on the layer mask? Paint which color on the eyes? We're going to select white. Right, so white is already selected, so you select white, take a paintbrush, make sure the layer mask is selected, and only on the eyes. I'm just gonna fill this with blue. Okay, I'm doing a very shabby job right now just to show you. Of course, it's kind of gone out here, no problem. Later on, like I said, we have separate videos on eye retouching where we'll do it properly, but right now, just to show you. So you can see. These little two dots, white are showing up. Where are they showing up? They're showing up on the eyes. So wherever that's white, you're seeing the effect of the top layer. Wherever it's black, you're seeing the effect of the bottom layer. So we've been able to kind of form a composite of these two layers so easily using a layer mask. So this is the speciality of layer masking, that it allows you to do something to your portrait in a very selective manner, that you can localize whatever you're doing on another layer so that it doesn't affect everything on the bottom layer because you would have done some work uh, on the bottom layer, but you want to do something. Like we'll be doing things like dodge and burn, frequency separation, and all these things, right? You only want them to affect certain parts of the skin. That's the beauty of retouching, that you don't want to go too loud. You only want to work on a localized area. And this is where layer masking will be continuously used in any kind of retouching, not just portrait retouching. Even if you were to do landscape, or any other thing, product, commercial photography, layer masking is always used to keep selective edits. Okay, localized and selective edits. So this is how layer masking works. I hope you like this. Even if you did not completely understand this right now, don't worry about it at all because we will be doing this so often in this course that you will just get used to layer masking. It's something that you cannot avoid. It is the water and the oxygen, whatever you call it, of Photoshop editing. So you will eventually get used to it. Right, so I'm going to see you in the next video. I hope you like this one. Bye for now.